this is Moby, the standard poodle. I hope you all are doing well today. I hope you're having a good holiday season. Thanks for being so patient. I know this video is super duper late, but this video I'm going to be talking about how I do my version of a thorough hand wash. I have already mixed shampoos as you can see over in the corner. And I have of course placed cotton balls in the ears like I usually do. And we are going to be using Wild Saint shampoos and facial washes. So when doing a bath, I usually start by soaking the entire body, starting with the head and then working my way down to the other end of the dog. I like to do this first because it'll make it easier for me to move around the shampoo, around his body and the coat. Moby is such a good boy. He is one of the clients that has followed me from my previous location of work or previous place of work and he's a really nice boy. I think he really enjoys doing the express service instead of sitting in a kennel for um, two hours or so because usually when I have a full set of dogs, I'll rotate between dogs. So dogs will typically spend about an hour to two hours in the kennel and I think Moby just really enjoys getting in and out and not having to wait on me to finish my other dogs. So once I've finished soaking the coat, I will start by scrubbing the head and I will start with the top of the head and work my way down. So down to the corners of the eyes, underneath the ears and the muzzle. I really like to get in there and scrub because dogs love to stick their faces in everything. Their food gets stuck in their muzzle and their ears can get super greasy. I hate working on dogs with a dirty face. There's just no way to make it look nice and it's not the type of work I want to put out. I never use my fingernails while scrubbing down a dog, but I do apply a decent amount of pressure to make sure I'm getting all the way down to the skin. Since the shampoo in this shop gets diluted about one to 16, it's easier to move around the shampoo than it is the facial scrub. I like to use this to clean the ears. I do put shampoo all over and on the inside of the ear flap, but not in the ear canal. The insides of the ear flaps need to be cleaned too. Moby just got over an ear infection and was being treated with medication, so it is extra super duper greasy in there. Once I've applied the shampoo, I rub his ears in between my hands and I also use my thumb to clean right around the ear canal which you've probably seen me do in a bunch of my other videos and once that's done I like to move on to the body starting with the highest point being the neck and working my way down to the feet making sure I get between the pads. Cleaning the pads in the ears was something I had to be reminded of consistently when I was first bathing. I've also noticed that when I train bathers, they will usually miss the inside of the ears, back of the neck where the loop sits, and the feet, and of course, the butt. I usually notice there is still poop on a dog's butt with a lot of new bathers because yes, it is gross to get in there, but what's the point of cleaning a dog and not cleaning the dirtiest part of them? I don't wanna get poop on my clippers. I do not like putting my clippers or scissors to dirty dogs. It's really important for me to have some sort of system to ensure that I don't miss any spots. Doing a haircut on a dirty dog is really impossible and no one wants to have to wash and dry a dog more than once, especially during the holidays. I had a standard poodle puppy come in the other day and I did his bath and blow dry. He had about four inches of hair and he of course peed himself in the kennel. Um, I needed to go to the bathroom and once I put him in the kennel, he also decided to go to the bathroom. So I did have to spend an extra 45 minutes rewashing and blow drying. I pretty much do the dog from top to bottom, getting all around the entire dog, insides, the legs, the armpits, everything. I usually do the tail and butt after I do the legs, but I think it really depends on what's going on back there and what they have for a tail, if it's matted, if it's long, if it's short, and I think it just really depends on how much poop is back there as well. Usually if there's a lot of poop back there, I will use the facial scrub to get the poop out and just kind of let it soak because 
For some reason, the facial scrub is a lot more concentrated in a sense that it gets the dog cleaner than the actual shampoo, which is why I normally only wash the face once and not twice like I do in this video. In this video, like I said, I do wash Moby's head twice because some poodles with full faces tend to get really, really gross. Because I feel like their curls also just hold on to everything, I don't know what it is. I typically only wash the head once and the body twice. I've noticed the shampoo that is provided in the shop and the fact that there is no bathing system. I can't get the dog as clean as I would like with one shampoo. Bathing systems, for those who are unfamiliar, are a piece of equipment that combines the shampoo and water along with the pressure of the hose to penetrate the coat and clean the dog all the way down to the skin. So these systems make it a lot easier on the groomer's hands and it saves a lot of time and money. I do recommend that if you are someone who is trying to bathe at home, to buy a shampoo that needs to be diluted and buy the mixing bottles like the one I have here and squeeze the shampoo onto the dog as you go instead of having to keep going back to the original bottle for handfuls of shampoo. You'll probably save time and money that way. I'll link some concentrated shampoos that I like in the description below. At this point, you're probably thinking, you use so much shampoo, what about conditioner? To be completely honest, since I have to hand wash, I do not use the concentrated conditioner provided because it really eats up a lot of my time that I don't have. It truly takes me about five minutes to rinse out a dog. And as a groomer, if we don't work, we don't get paid. The fewer dogs we do, the less money we earn. And I'm not saying that I don't get paid well and I don't care about the well beings of these dogs. And you would know that from watching my previous videos that I do love my clients. I do have an alternative though. I use a leave on conditioning spray that you see hanging from the bar in the tub. And I also use a second leave on conditioning spray with sunscreens before the brush out, as I've talked about in my previous videos. This dog's entire bath and blow dry took me about 45 minutes and then the haircut alone takes me about an hour. Two hours out of my eight hour day for one dog. We do charge accordingly, but realistically it should be more, but that's a different conversation. Back to the bath. When I am rinsing to finish bathing, I do the same thing when I shampoo. I start from the top to the bottom because gravity. Top of the head, ears, muzzle, and then I work my way down to the back of the neck, back, tail, legs, and feet. The best way to tell if a dog is clean is that they will be literally squeaky clean. It's a feeling I've learned to recognize once I've pushed all the excess water out of the coat. I should be able to rub the dog's fur between my fingers and it shouldn't feel greasy or oily.
Next, I will spray my leave-on conditioner all over the dog and make sure it is set in the coat with a brush. I usually try to let it sit and do its thing for a couple of minutes before I blow dry. Moby is such a good boy for this entire process. I've been working with him for about four years now and he is just the sweetest poodle. I know he doesn't really like the grooming process as much, but I think doing the express service, like I, says, like I said, has really made it a better experience for him. He has separation anxiety, so he hates being away from his mother. His mother now works at home because of the pandemic and he's just with her 24 seven pretty much. So he, as much as he is wagging his tail and he likes me, he does of course prefer his mother. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Make sure to like and subscribe, comment any questions you have down below, and I will see you next week. Thanks, bye.